Can you hear my voice? Voice? Can you hear from me? Okay, that's good. Thank you. Now, before we go into the lecture, I will have a few announcements made here. There will be no class in the next week because it is a recess week for all of you. The laboratory manual and the experiment videos have been uploaded to the Blackboard. Now, we will discuss the lab work, the, the testing videos, and everything during the tutorial session in the week right after the, reset, uh, the recess. Now you need to require, you, you, you need to attend a compulsory lab, lab session tentatively in the week right after the 1st of June. If you do not attend the laboratory session, you will 
not be awarded any laboratory marks, right, even though you have submitted your lab report. Regarding the midterm test, we will give you uh, the announcement shortly once we have got the more solid details. Okay. So, any question? Any question regarding the announcement? Any question? Is that clear? Okay, thank you. Okay, we'll continue our lecture in chapter seven, the slope stability. Now, uh, for let's review how the slope will fail in a slope. Now, here is the Okay, this is slow mass. Now, because the mass is so heavy, right? Now, if the weight, the sliding force is too great, and the soil resistance, that is the, you know, the soil resistance, is too small to withstand the downward force is the downward force, right? What will happen? If this force is so great, right? Very great, but that's very small. Then this mass will move downwards, right? So there will be a failure. In other words, the soil mass will be sheared against the base of the slip surface of the failure surface. So that is the failure surface, failure plane, right? Of course, this plane, this plane may not be a planar, or it could be a curved one, right? You know what's a plane, and also a curved surface. I would say that most failure cases will be involved curve failure surfaces. In other words, when the downward force is larger than the shear strain of soil, the slope will fail. We can analyze the stability of slope by three methods. The first one is the the Kuhlman method, the Kuhlman, the stability lumbar, the stability lumbar method, and the method of slices. In 
in the Kuman method, we assume there will be a plane, right? a plane, a very flat and smooth plane as the failure surface. In other words, the, this triangular piece of soil mass will be sliding right, downwards against this failure plane. There are some important parameters for the analysis. That's the toe, right? That's the toe of the slope. Here's the toe. Right? That's the angle. Sorry. Okay. No, that's the beta, right? The slope angle. Angle, right? Now, what's the weight of this triangular mass? The weight. W, right? When you, there's a, you know, a mass or the weight, W, right? Resting on a sloping surface. We know that that is the gravity weight, W, right? And if you resolve the forces into two directions, you know, forces vector, right? If that is angle, angle alpha, okay? So that will be W sine alpha, right? The, the sliding down force, the downward force, right, is the W sine alpha. And here is the W cosine alpha. So you got two components, right? Of course, we will be interested in this downward sliding force. So that's W sine alpha, right? That's the force that tried to pull, right, the triangular soil mass down the slope. So that is the, you know, the driving force that triggers the slope failure, W sine alpha, okay? So that is the basic parameters for the, you know, the, for the analysis, right? W, the weight of soil, soil mass, and beta is the slope angle, and alpha is the angle of the failure plan, alpha failure plan. So every, everyone hear my explanation? Is that okay? Okay, good. So we proceed with the Kuhlman metaphor. Now, the downward force. Here is the downward force. The downward force, W alpha. Remember alpha, right? This one is the, so this is the alpha, alpha. W sign alpha. What about the resistance of the soil to resist, to resist the downward movement? Remember, that is the More Coulomb failure, the string criteria, right? Shear strength, right? Shear strength. And that is what? Cohesion. And phi is the angle of 
internal friction. Okay. So that is the C five soil. Right? What is the sigma? Sigma is the normal stress. So that is the normal stress. Okay. What's the normal force? That is the normal force. Right? W cosine alpha. Okay? And what's the resistance? Because cohesion is the Q Newton per meter square. So you have to multiply this L, right? Sorry. You have to multiply this L. Okay? So the cohesion Q Newton per meter square times the length give you the total downward force due to the Q, uh, due to the cohesion, right? Due to the cohesion. So C times L. And what about the normal force? Normal force is the W cosine alpha. Okay, so that's the normal force. And that is the cohesion, right? Cohesion resistance. Once times the tangent phi d give you the, the friction force. In other words, the resistance consists of two parts, the cohesion and also the friction. The friction is equal to W cosine alpha times the friction angle, right? Tangent phi plus the cohesion resistance. Cohesion resistance is equal to the cohesion times the length of the failure plan. When you compare, this is the driving downward force, right? That is the driving force. And that is the, is the, RS is the, what? The resistance. So, the resistance to resist the driving force. If the resistance is greater than the driving force, there will be no failure, right? If the driving force is greater than the soil resistance, then this soil mass will be moving downwards. So it's you know it's a competition, competition between the driving force and the soil resistance. So let's recap right? for this formula. CD is the cohesion. L is the length of the of the mass at the failure plan. W is the weight of the soil mass, that triangular mass. Cosine alpha, right? Is the alpha is the angle of the failure plan times the friction angle, tangent. So that is the resisting force. Now, when we are going to design the slope, if there's, you know, if that friction angle, say for this, C is equals to 20, right? 20, K, 20 kPa, and that is, you know, 30 degrees. Now, that is the soil strength. parameters, right? Okay. In other words, that's the actual strength of the cohesion, the angle internal friction offered by the soil. For design, we dare not use the 100% of strength to resist the soil mass. We have to adopt the safety factor, right? In other words, we try to get this, you know, that's the design. That's the design. Phi D, D for design. 
So we have to, we dare not use the tangent phi, right? Tangent, you know, 30 degrees. We want to use what? Tangent 30 degrees divided by safety factor in order to adopt a more conservative approach, right? We want to be more safe, right? We dare not use 100% of the strength of the saw. So we use part of it. So we have to divide the tangent 30 degrees, right? By a, a safety factor. Now what's the value of the safety factor? It's around 1.3 to 1.4, right? Typically. Okay, and also the cohesion. We dare not use the 20 kPa. You should use what? 20 divided by safety factor. So that is the, you know, the CD, right? We will not use 100% of the 20 kPa, but a part of it. So we divide that by a safety factor. Now, of course, this safety factor may be different. So that is best. C, C for cohesion, and that's F, F, S for phi, right? So it's the safety factor relating to the angular internal friction. Now, what's the mass of this? W. The W is equal to the, you know, the area of the triangle, right? The area of this triangle, okay? It's equal to L times H times gamma over two. You know, gamma is what? The unit weight of salt, right? And here, It's the area of the triangle, right? Area of the mass. Because we are considering one meter length of the slope. So it gives you what? Meter square gives you the volume, right? One meter, right? Which is perpendicular to this plane times the area of the mass. It gives you the volume per meter length of the slope, and times the unit weight, it gives you the W, okay. And then we apply some mathematics, right, to give you this equation, right? It's relating to the the trigonometry. Okay. Trigonometry of the triangle, right? And the slope. You should deduce that what's H? That's H. You know, the height of the triangular mass equals to, you know, that's the, what's the big H? Okay, over sine beta. Right? Times the H times, you know, this angle. This angle is beta minus alpha, right? So a H over sine beta, right, is equal to what? H over sine beta should be equal to small h over sine beta minus alpha, right? You can see h over this 
sine beta, it gives you this here, right? Give you the, if that's L dash, it should be L dash. L dash is equal to, you know, the length of the slope, right? The sloping length. L dash is equal to H over sine beta or small h over sine beta minus alpha. So it's a matter of simple trigonometry, right? Now, given that, when you substitute the equation five into the above equation, then you got this equation. So the W is in terms of what? L, H, beta, alpha, and gamma. So when you combine those equations together, right, you know that W, right, put it into there, right? And then, and solving for the CD, you come up with this equation. CD is equal to, you know, the height of the slope. And beta, you know, the angle of the slope. And alpha is the, what? The angle of the failure plan. Remember that? Failure plan. And beta is the, you know, the slope angle. Okay? And that is to, you know, the cohesion. And that is the angle of the internal friction, right? Gamma is the unit weight. That is the height of slope. Slope height. Now, what can you tell from this formula? tells you that given a design cohesion, remember, what's this cohesion? The short cohesion divided by the factors of safety, right? And also the angle of friction, the design angle of friction. It will be equal to the interaction of soil divided by the factor of safety for the design purposes. Once you got the cohesion, design cohesion, right? And also the design angle and internal friction. And if you know the beta, the beta, the angle of slope, then you know how high is the slope can stand up, all right? To, to, to give you the, the height of the slope, you know, the height of the slope, big H. Let me recap. Given the design cohesion and design angle and internal friction, and also the unit weight on the soil mass, if you know the you know the slope angle, and you should know the relationship between the slope height and the failure plan. Right? So that is the meaning of this formula. Now, because that equation, right, that equation, that equation, suppose we know this is given, right, and this is given. This is given. That is given. Right? Okay. Oh, sorry. So alpha. 
CD, okay, depends on alpha. So, you know, just like F is a function of, of X. So you have to use the calculus, right, to find what's the alpha. So that give you the D, C, D, D alpha equal to zero, right? Just like you want to know what's the value of X if D, F, D, X equal to zero, right? You know, for the calculus, when you apply this differentiation, you will know what's the minimum value or the, or the critical value. So that's why here you set the, you know, the here, the DCD, right? The design cohesion with respect to a different angle alpha and set it equal to zero. Now that will give you the critical alpha and it work out that beta plus phi D over two. And you substitute this critical alpha back into this equation. So you put up the alpha, right, into the, this equation. You got, you know, the H. What's the value of H? That can be resisted. So it gives you this equation. In other words, when you know, if you know this angle, beta, right? That's the you know, the angle of the of the slope, and you know the CD, and you know the the phi D, and you should know the gamma. When you put the CD, the phi D, and the beta, you know how high the slope could stand up. So that is the shape or the height of the cut slope, right? So when you input the CD, the phi D, and also the beta gamma, then you come up with, with these the height of the slope that can stand up without failure. Okay. So any question for the derivation of the Kuhlman method? Any question? You know, it's a it's a matter of the you know when when you combine the, the the physics right the mechanics together with the source strength that will give you this equation and with you know some little calculus right to determine what, what's the critical alpha right the angle of the failure plan that give you the height of the slope that stand up. So is that okay? Can you follow up with my uh, derivation of this formula? Only one? Two? Only two can follow. I want more. <laughs> okay.
you know, that is a bit about the theory, right, behind the, the Kuhlman method. So that is the theoretical part of this, you know, of this course. Right? So you have to know something about that. Because you have learned about the mechanics and also you know what's physics and also the calculus and also trigonometry, right? When you apply all these things together, then it should not be as strange. To, it should not be strange to you that you can come up with this formula. It's not a secret, right? You can derive the whole thing, right, by yourself, and you can come up with the formula exactly as indicated here. Okay, then we should apply this formula to demonstrate how Kuhlman method could be applied to analyze a slope. Example one, you are going to dip a trench you know what's a trench? No, that's a trench. So it's a vertical cut, right? Vertical cut. It's a cut, vertical cut. So that is the height of the trench. Okay, 1.5, meters. Without soaring, so there will be no support, right, on this metal cut. In other words, the trend is stand, stand still there. No soaring. You are given the soil parameters here. Cohesion, C, and that is the friction angle. Right? Angle internal friction and 20.2 kPa was that. Angle internal friction. Sorry, that's, that's a unit weight. So that's the cohesion. You know, that is the gamma. Okay, you got, you're given the soil parameters, cohesion 20.1, sorry, 20.2 kPa, angle internal friction 28 degrees. And the unit weight of the soil is 19 km per cubic meters. So you got the CD, right? And what's the beta? What's beta? Here. The beta is a vertical cut. So beta is 90 degrees, right? So beta 90 degrees and phi D 20 degrees and what's gamma? Nine, uh, gamma 19, right? And what's CD? 20.2. But because H is given 1.8, so you just leave this cohesion is an unknown. So you work out the CD from this formula, give you CD is 5.14 kPa. Okay? Then you come up with what? 5.14 and 20.2, it gives you 3.93. What about if the, you know, by setting the factor of safety phi D 1.0, so you are directly use 20 degrees. So here you use the 20 degrees. In other words, the factor of safety for phi is equal to one, then Factor safety for, you know, the C equals to 3.93. Now, that's no good. 
because you got the different safety factor, right? Or you can, you can come the other way around by putting, you know, the factor of safety for cohesion is equal to one. Then you can work out the factor of safety for the friction angle, right? Because you, you, you have phi and C, right? You can apply here, right? F factor of safety is equal to one. So you can use the phi D. Phi D will be equals to exactly 20 degrees, right? And you work out what is the CD. So the CD is equal to 5.14, right? And compare with the actual cohesion. You got safety factor 3.93. Okay? Now let's see. So it's not reasonable. Now, we try to increase the safety factor for phi from one to two. Right? So you got the two here, right? And the, you know, the, the angle in internal friction for the salt is 28 degrees. So what's the design? Here's the design value, right? The design phi. Design phi. So the design phi gives you what? Here, right? 14.89. And then you put 14.89 into here, right? To get the CD. What's the new CD? 7.17, right? Sorry, here. Here, sorry give you 6.57. So you compare 20.2 here, right? 20.2. 20.2 is the actual string of, uh, of the soil. And you got the theoretical value, the design 6.57. It gives you 3.07. So you got 2.0 for the phi and 3.07 for the C cohesion. So you try once more. You're approaching, you know, 3.0. So you try the, you know, the, the factor of safety for the phi, 3.0, right? So here's the... No, 3.0. And then you got the friction angle, 10.05 degrees. Right? So you put here, right? and you want to get here, the CD give you 7.17. Compared with 20.2, you got say the factor, 2.82. Now, take a look here. Now, the factor safety for the angle of friction and also the cohesion more or less agree each other. So probably 2.x something, right? But it's very close, isn't it? You know, that is the... Save the factor for the cohesion, right? Cohesion. That is the factor safety for the friction angle. Now, if FSC is equal to FS5, that is, you know, that is perfect, right? Because the safety factor is the same, right? For whether for cohesion for, or for the friction angle. So that plot will give you a 45 degree, right? So two here, right? That's the two here, right? Two here. Two point zero. Here. Four point zero. And here, right? Four point zero. 
So that is a 45 degree straight line. So if you plot the different factor safety obtained in our several iteration. So when you first start 1.0, it gives you right 3. Point something. You know that's the first trial. And that's the second trial. You know that's the first trial. Then this point. If you draw a curve, right, joining all the three, three points, and that is give you what? It should give you 2.84. So that is the answer. And 2.84. Okay. Can you follow my iterations? The several trials of the calculation. Can you follow? Yes or no? Can you follow the calculation and explanation for this for example? Yes or no? Okay. Good. We got 19 students here. Only a few of you can understand my explanation. It's a pity for me, right? Only seven. It's terrible. If you are listening very carefully and follow my explanation, I believe that it's not that difficult, right? You know, we have some, we have some similar example in our examination. So I, I think you better get familiar with this method, right? Kuhlman method. It's not a, you know, it's, it's not a difficult one, but you know the iteration required. You have to, you know, to make some guess on the preliminary, preliminary trials first, right? And then you get close to the answer. Okay. Then I will proceed on with the second method. Now, the second method is the stability number method. Stability number. This is the stability number, right? It's not 
a plane of failure is a circular arc plane. In other words, it's not like that. You know, that's the radius, right? So that's slope. This is the, you know, the circular failure plan, failure, right? Failure plan, right? You know, it's a circular, not a, you know, a flat plane. It's a plane. Now, what's the stability number? It's defined as the gamma, you know, the, so you got gamma and you got the cohesion, right? And that is the H, the height of the slope. So you get everything, right? into a stability number. Now, let me tell you the units. What's the, the unit for the gamma? Kn per cubic meter, and that's one meter. What we will get? Kn per meter square, right? And what about for cohesion? Kn per meter square. So NS is dimensionless. It bears no unit. Just like the area of the circle, right? It goes to pi r square. If that is meter square, that's meter square. So pi equals to fun, right? 3.1416. It has no units. It's a dimensionless constant. Stability number is also dimensionless. Remember that. Dimensional. It bears no units. There's a circular, right? It's a circular failure surface. That's circular, right? Now you got three types of failure. That's the you know. That's the ground, that's the, the top of the slope. Now, if you got a bearing layer, a very hard layer, a hard, hard layer, below the toe of the slope, so you could have this failure. You know, a little bit down the, the toe of the slope. Right, so here, right, this point is below the toe. You know, below the toe, but the failure passed through the toe. You can see here. The failure surface passed through the toe of the slope. And here, the second type is that it does not pass the toe. The toe is here, right? Sorry. The toe is here, right? This failure surface does not, does not pass through the toe. It, inter it intersects more, the slope. It intersect here. That is a slope. It intercepts the slope here. It does not pass through the toe, but it passes. It passes somewhere right, on the slope surface. And then the third that the third type is the midpoint circle. Let's pass through the midpoint of the slope. You can see here. Right, the toe. And the top. Sorry, sorry. Yeah. 
you draw here, here. Okay. The center is here. This is the midpoint. So the vertical line passing through the center of the circle arc is in the midpoint between the toe and the top of the slope. So that is the type C. Remember that the stability number is equal to what? Gamma H over C, right? There's no place for the phi, the angle internal friction. So for this chart, phi is equal to zero. In other words, the angle of internal friction is equal to zero. Otherwise, you cannot use this stability number for the graph here. Okay. So you can apply here if C is equal to zero. There's no problem, right? How can you use this chart? Right? Now, there's a factor, ND. What's ND here? What's the ND? Is the ND. ND is the, you know, the height from the top of the slope down to the bearing stratum. Now, of course, if ND is equal to one, it means that Yeah, right. Okay, that's the H. So we are talking about, you know, the failure of the of the saw is along the circular arc here, and this is the one. There will be, you know, the the failure of the circular slope is exactly right above the toe of the slope. So everything is above the toe of the slope. That's ND is equal to one. So ND is equal to one here. So you're using this curve, right? What about if you have a, you know, a failure? Okay. We got the edge here. And that's ND times H, right? So depending on the ND value, if ND is equal to 1.2, so if that is, say, 8 meters, 1.2 means 9.6 meters, right? So ND is equal to 1.2, then you should use this curve, right? OK?
then you can calculate, right? If the beta is, you know, 30 degrees, so if the beta Thirty degrees, so you should use this. You know this thirty, right? And then up, come up to there. That's you know that's one point two. One point two. So here, right? So you directly read this value, right? One point two. That's one point two, right? MD equals to one point two. Because nine point six. Okay, so you know the the value here, say six point seven, right? So NS equal to six point seven. So you can calculate, right? Equals to gamma H over C. If you know the gamma and if you know the C, then you can work out H, right? So you know what's the the height of this slope that can be achieved. Now if you compare right this h with the eight meters. If you work out the h is equal to six meter, but here's eight meter, so that's not safe, right? In other words, the stability number will give you the safe height of the slope, and then you compare with this actual height of the slope, then you know whether it's safe or not. So that's the use of the stability number method. Now, if the angle internal friction is not zero, but greater than zero, what should you do? Again, you got this chart, right? You can see different five value. Again, if you have a slope, say here, sixty degree, right? You know the you know the the angle internal friction is ten degrees, then you can, you know, bit out Now that will give you the NS, say 7.2. Again, you can use the gamma H over C, right? Once you know the, you know, the gamma and C, you can work out H. And then you compare your calculator H with this one. If that H is, you know, than this H, it means that you have a safe height of the slope. And vice versa. Okay. So that, you know, C5 soil. You can use, you can use this chart, right? If for the different value of the friction. For five greater than three degrees, the failure surface always a toe circle. It means that it always pass through the toe of the slope. So it gives you this failure. So uh, we will talk about the iteration procedure here. Of course, we will go through the example to practice right, this iteration procedure. You start with, you know, a C5 soil, and you got also the gamma, right? So you always use the safety factor for the phi.
equals to one. And then you look for the another fly, right? And got the NS. And then from the NS, you work out the C. And then you divide, you know, your C with DC. That is the, you know, the short string, right? Now that will give you the C, calculator C with the actual C, that will give you the safety factor on C, right? So, and check this FC. with the safety factor. If they are not the same, then you repeat the whole procedure. Okay. Suppose you got the FC equal to 2.5. Then the next trial you will be using will be Use two, two, right? And see whether, what's the value? So it could be 2.2, right? So, and then you try 2.1 until you got this same safety factor for the cohesion and the friction angle. To illustrate how the procedures are carried out for stability number method, now let's take a look for the example two. Example two, you got a slope 10 meters high. You got the gamma and the C. Now that is the soil strength. So strength. So for the design, D D for design, right? Design. So we will not use the hundred percent of nineteen point two kPa, but we apply a safety factor trial first trial. Right? One point two five. Try one point two five. So you got a design cohesion. 15.39, okay. And then from that equation, you know, you got H, that is H, that's the gamma, and that is the CD, right? You got 11.5, okay. Now, what about for the friction angle? If the soil friction angle 16 degrees and you apply the same safety factor, right? Because Fs phi is equal to Fs C, right? So you got what's the design angle internal friction. From this equation, you got what? 12.9, okay? And then you look up the stability number chart. You know, for figure 14, 14, and, 14 and 10, given that the 5D, 12.9, And stability number, number 11.5. Here. 
what the friction angle friction angle 12.9 and ns 11.5 So you can see here, NS, NS is equal to twelve point nine and eleven point five. Friction angle that is a friction angle twelve point nine and then N S equal to what eleven point five. So it's around here, right? So what's the beta between 50, 40 and 50, right? It's 44 degrees. Between 40 and 50, right? So you got from that chart, you have the beta, 44 degrees. Is that okay for you? Now this example illustrates the use of stability number method. It's not, it's not that difficult, right? But you have to know Right, the procedure, how you can come up with the safe sloping angle or the safe height of the slope, okay? Any question? No question? Now these two examples illustrate the use of the safety factor in the soil mechanics or in the geotechnical engineering. Now that's that is quite strange to what you have learned in the other structural mechanics subjects. We have the different safety factor for the different soil parameters. So we have to adopt the safety factor for the angle internal friction and also the angle, uh, also the cohesion, right? We try to match up the two safety factors and converge to the same value by iteration. So by iteration and other several trials, then the safety factor, the different safety factor will come to a agreement, right? So you have a common safety factor. Now that makes the whole problem rational to us, right? If, the, you know, if the soil has got different soil uh, safety fa factors in different aspects, that's not reasonable. So that is the, the, the magic, right? How to deal with this uh, geotechnical engine problem. The focus is to, to find ways, right? And find iteration so that we can come up with the same safety factor. Only we have the same safety factor for the 
different strain parameters in soils, then we say that the solution will be will become right a irrational engineer decision. we come to the third method. In fact, the previous two methods are not so common in our engineering world. In geotechnical engineering, like in the geotechnical engine office of the CEDD of the Hong Kong government, every slope will be analyzed by this method. It's called the method of slices. In the previous two methods, we don't use any computer. But here, for the method slices, we always use the computer to help us, right? Although, during the exam examination, you might be asked to perform this calculation by hands. In other words, the, the examination expects you to cut the slope into several pieces of slices and perform the calculation. For the actual practice, in fact, this method will be performed by computer because the slope will be cut into many, many slices in order to achieve a more accurate result. For this method, There are some advantages of this method over the other method. First of all, you may have a non-circular failure surface. Now that's good. Because you have different types of soil for a slope, right? You have you know, the soil in different layers, layer one, layer two, layer three, and layer four, and so on. So in every layer, you got C1, I1, gamma one, and so on. For C4, phi four, and gamma four, right? So by this method, you can allow different layers of soil or different strength parameters. And also you can have a, you know, not necessarily a circular. It can be any curved surface. So it's very versatile method. Versatile, you know versatile. Do you know this word? Anyone knows what is meaning of the versatile? Anyone know the meaning of versatile? It's a versatile metaphor. What, what does that mean? You don't know? Do you know what's DVD? Could anyone tell me what is the DVD? Have you got any DVD disc at your home where you can play the music or even you can uh, write the files into a DVD disc? Yes, DVD. Now, the V in the middle of the DVD is the versatile. It's not about the video, right? Versatile means it can fit different formats. You got it? Whether the file is a, you know, a digital file, a word file, or even a music file, or even a video file, well, this disc will fit, will, will fit for all purposes. 
So that's the word versatile. So this method of slices is very versatile. It can be dealing with, you know, the sort of, of non-uniform characteristic. Even though the soil profile is, is made of several layers of difference, even rock or soil and so on. Right? And also the failure surface could be any shape. So that is the versatile method, right? To, to meet all the requirements or to meet all different requirements. So that's the beauty of this method of slices. Now, first of all, the mass will be divided into equal width. So you got, if you got a failure surface here, divide into the equal width. Right? So all the width are equal. They are the equal width. Okay, equal width. So if, if it is 10 meters, if that's 10 meters, and there are 10 strips, so each one will be one meter width, one meter wide, right? Equal width. What's the weight of this soil? This all equals to what? If that height is H1, that's H2, so What's the weight here? Gamma times the volume, right? Volume is equal to H1 plus H2 divided by 2 times the, the width, right? Equal width, of course, times 1 meter for every meter length of the slope. So you got this kilonewton per meter, right? Per meter length. So this width are equal, right? We assume the curve the failure surface, right? Any curve for this one is a circular. Well, for the sake of the of this curriculum, you will be only asked to do the calculation for circular failure surface. You don't, you don't need to do the calculation for non-circular, non right? So that will simplify our job. So that is the slices. How many slices are there? Seven slices of equal width. Okay. What's the weight? Again, say H1 is H2, and you got, you know, there's the, you know, the, the width, right? The delta L. So the area H1 plus H2 divided by 2 times delta L times the gamma. Okay? That will give you the, the weight of these slices. And once you got the W, it's the W. So you got the W, right? And then because it's part of the, you know, the failure surface. So for this slice, you should know what's the angle. Okay? What's the angle? Angle alpha here. Right? 
right? So you can work out, you know the height here, and you know the width here, then you should be able to work out the alpha, right? So you know the alpha. And you got the W, right? So what's the downward force, WP? So the driving force, right? Driving downward force. WP is equal to the W sine alpha, okay? What is the, the normal force, the normal reaction here? Is the W cosine alpha, okay? So remember that, W sine alpha, and here, the W cosine alpha, okay? Now you need the, you, you, you need to know the WR cosine alpha because by friction, you know, it's equal to what? The friction. The friction to resist is equal to, you know, W cosine alpha times what? The friction. That's the mu, right? The friction coefficient, tangent phi. Phi is the angle of internal friction. But there is also another force to resist the downward movement. That's the cohesion. So what's the cohesion? Times the, you know, the sloping length. This the sloping length, right? So that is delta L dash. You know? Delta L dash, so that's delta L dash, because you also have the cohesion, right? So you got the two resistance, one coming from the cohesion, the other coming from the angle internal friction. So these two forces are the resistance to counteract the W sine alpha. So that is the, you know, the theory behind the method slices. So, you know, you got many slices. You got 10, so seven here, right? I equal to one up to seven, right? And you got every slide, you got the W cosine alpha times the tangent phi. That is the friction resistance, right? And then you, Multiply the C to cohesion with the L, you know what's the L? L, L, L. All these are the cohesion force, right? Okay. So add, you add up more this L. So this L is what? The length of this failure surface. So co cohesion times the length of this, okay, of this phase failure surface, it gives you the, you know, the cohesion, okay, over the W sine alpha, that is the downward force, right, the total downward force. That's the downward force. Okay? You if you add up all those downward forces and compare with the resistance and check if the safety factor is greater than one. Is is greater than one means that the resistance is bigger than the downward force. Then the slope is safe. So you, 
can you catch up with my explanation for the method of slices? So, when you understand, you make me happy, okay? Now, let's come to the word example for this method of slices. It's an easy one. Here, how many slices are there? Six slices, right? You know, there's slice one. So there's one. And there's two, three, four, five, and six, right? Okay, the center is 80 meters, and you got okay, and the you know, the, the height is 40 meters, so that is 40 meters, right? 40 meters. Okay, and the width is four meters. So every piece is four meters. Okay. For the slice one, what's the weight here? The slice one. So you work out this area, okay? So that gives you 22.4. What about for the slice? Sorry, one is here. That is the slice seven, right? Slice seven. Here is a slice seven. Sixty six point. 3.8, right, for slice 7. So the area of this triangle is 16.6.58. Of course, you have to multiply, right, the gamma times the area. Okay, gamma is the unit weight of soil, right? And what about this area? This, is, this area is for slice 1. Slice one, 22.4, okay? What about for slice four? Slice four. What's this area? Okay, now give you, when you multiply the area with the unit weight of soil, it gives you Four, 5.2. And then here, what's the angle? That is for slide one. What's this angle? This angle. 
slice one. 70 degrees. Of course, you can either, you know, That is a slice. Okay. Now, if you want to know this angle, is equal to this angle. Right? If you you know, if you enlarge this angle, you know, that's the radius, okay? That should be 90 degree, right? And that is 70, right? 70 degrees. And this will also be 70, okay? Because this angle, will be equal to this angle. So you just measure, right? Here's 70. That will give you this 70, okay? So that's 70. And also for the slice four, here is what? 24 degrees. Okay, slice four, 24. And here you got negative x for seven, right? So you got the alpha, so you know what sign out, sorry. You know sine alpha, cosine alpha? What's delta L? Delta L. Now that's the delta L. Right? That's delta L for slice one. It's equal to 2.924 meters. What about for the slice four? Okay. The slice four. You measure the, the line here, right? That's the length of the slice four, right? Here, the length. And the length. Okay, for slice one, the length is 2.924 meters. And for slice four, 4.4 4 4.376 meters. And more about for the slice seven. You got this, right? This, the length of the slice, or the length along the failure surface of that slice. So you got all this value, and then you multiply, right? W sine alpha, W sine alpha, okay? So you get this column, W sine alpha, okay? And then, you multiply by W cosine alpha. W cosine alpha. W cosine alpha, right? Uh, that will give you W cosine alpha. And then you add up That is summation delta L. That gives you the L, right? And that it gives you the summation W sine alpha. And that gives you, sorry.
and summation cos w cosine alpha okay so you put you know that is this you know that's the c okay so that's the c and that is the delta l that's the l That is the L. L is equal to thirty point five zero, and according to formula, that should be summation w cosine alpha right and the you know the denominator is the w sine alpha right and that is the tangent 20 degrees now that will give you a safety factor 1.55 so that's a pretty good safety factor for this law it's much greater than one factor of safety 1.55. What do you feel my explanation for this work example three? Do you understand the whole process of the calculation? Feedback, please. Do you understand the process of the calculation? For the example three, okay, good. You are always the first one to answer me. Season five. Good. What about the others? Okay. Let's take a 10 minutes break here, right, before we step into the tutorial, okay? 10 minutes break.
Okay, welcome back to our tutorial. Could everyone see the screen? It should be a web file on the tutorial assignment four. Can you see the web file? Okay, good. Now, before we go into the tutorial assignment, just to remind you, the today is the deadline for submission of the assignment free. So let me help have your assignment free, right? By the midnight today. Can you do that? Okay, good. Submission has been completed by you. What about the others? Okay, now for those uh, who hasn't submitted your assignment free, please do as far as possible. Okay, now, uh, before we go into this assignment, I just remind some latecomers. The announcement made at the very beginning of this lecture. So just to remind those latecomers. Okay, I'm not going to repeat the announcement. Please uh, take a photo, a snapshot, right, by your mobile. Right, all these are the, uh, the announcement I make right at the beginning of our lectures tonight. Okay. A reminder to your submission, please submit the file in this format, A3, File format.
please do the submission in this way. Okay, I need a single PDF file. The file name, assignment free, A3, underscore, Chan Tai Man, underscore, your student number, student ID, okay? Uh, you should be able to download this tutorial assignment 4 from the Blackboard. Now, uh, of course, for the assignment 4, you don't need to do any submission at all. But we will give you some hints right, and discuss how this problem could be handled. And please try the, these problems as far as possible until by the next or you know the in the next week, I will give you the solution through, through the platform. Okay, but there's no requirement, right, to submit the assignment for. We only do the odd number and ass assignment. Okay. Now for question one. In discussion of the Kuhlman method, we have used the concept of the, you know, the design or the developed the cohesion and also the uh, design coefficient of friction, tangent phi d. And the definition could be as, right, for factor safety, cohesion is equal to the, the actual cohesion over the design cohesion and also the tangent phi over the design value. Now determine the, the factor of safety about the shear strength, okay, the tau d of the salt, if fsc is equal to fs5. So you, you know there's a little bit about theory. How are you going to develop a new safety factor for the shear strength? You know, the Coulomb my strength criteria. criteria the shear strength is equal to what c plus sigma tangent phi right so that is that is the the shear strength And what about the design strength? D 
you see the plus the sigma tangent phi d, right? So that is the design strength. Okay, so what's the factor of safety about the shear strength is equal to okay, is equal to the C plus sigma tangent phi, right? And then over, sorry, I think I have got a problem uh, with my pen, so uh, I will uh, quit off the program first and then we start. So please be patient. Okay. Could you see the screen, the web file? Yes or no? Okay, good.
Okay, we're back to this uh, this pen tablet. Okay, now uh, so that's the design strength. Size ring. Okay, so what's the factor safety about the the strength? So if it will equal to what? You know the source strength, sigma tangent phi, and over C D plus sigma tangent phi D, right? You know, the factor safety is defined as the source strength over the design strength. Now, what is this, you know, the C? C is equal to FSC times CD, right? And what's tangent phi? Is equal to FS phi times tangent phi d okay so we get everything in terms of design string parameters so that is f c times sigma d and sigma tangent phi equals to f s phi tangent phi d over c d plus tangent phi d right now according to the condition if sc is equal to f f phi right so is equal to SC or S5, FS5, you go to CD plus 10 sigma sigma tangent 5D. CD plus sigma tangent phi D. Okay, now this could be because they are equal, right? Because they are equal. Sorry. Because they are equal. Okay, so you just pick up this FFC or FS5, right? These two are just the same. So leaving CD and the tangent phi D and sigma, so you can. So in other words, it's equal to FSC or FS5. Okay, in other words, the factor safety in terms of shear strength is exactly equal to the factor safety in terms of cohesion or the angle internal friction. Okay, that's the derivation. So you got it for the question one. Is that okay?
Good. What, what about the others? Are you happy with the solution I have discussed? What about the others? Okay. Anyway, I will give you the solution, right? Or you can try your first at home. Try the problem again at home, okay? Now we come to the next question. Question two, a slope with this configuration, H is equal to three meters. So three meters, H is three meters. equal to three meters and you got the gamma c and the phi okay and here's the 75 degrees okay now according to the Kuhlman method h is equal to four times CD sine beta and cosine phi D. And then you got the denominator gamma one minus cosine. Beta minus phi d. That's the Kuhlman formula. Remember the the technique. Try FS phi one point zero. Therefore, tangent phi d equals to tangent phi divided by fs phi so equals to tangent because this phi is 35 and you use 1.0 so the phi d must be equal to 35 degrees, okay? And then you apply this equation. The equation star will give you what? Three meters. Four, the unknown is CD, right? 
sine, what's the beta? Here's the beta, right? 75 degrees, and then cosine what? 5D, 35, right? And what's the gamma? 18. So the black cat, one minus cosine, 75 minus 35. So from this equation, you got the CD, right? CD is equals to what? 3.99 KPA. Okay, so we obtain So the the first A for the CD is 3.99. So what's the factor of safety for the CD, uh, for the cohesion? It's equal to the soil give you 20.5, 20 20 but you estimate the design strength is only 3.99. So what's the safety factor for the cohesion? It's equal to 5.1. Uh, here. This one is 1.0. But you got 3.1. So that's no good, right? No good. Give an NG there, no good. So what you should do? Try. Try. FS5 equals to 2.5, right? The midway between one to five. So you try, sorry. Two point five. So tangent five D equal to tangent thirty five degrees, right? Divided by two point five, right? In new safety factor. That gives you what? Five D equals to 15.6 degrees. Again, the formula, if you want, three equals to what? Four CD, right? Sine beta, 75 degrees, and cosine what? 15.6, right? Your new 5D. And then 18, 1 minus cosine, right? 75, 
minus 15.6 degrees. So give you what? The CD, a new CD. What's the new CD? The new CD will be around 7.11 kPa. So what's the factor safety? So what's the factor safety? The pen is not stable. Sorry, that. So what's the factor safety? It's equal to the C is equal to 20.5 over 7.11. Okay. So what what do you get? 2.88. Now take a look. You got the safety factor 2.8 against 2.5. It's much cl more closer, right? So I'm not going to get the fair trial. Now you should uh, try your best between 2.5 and 2.88. Now the answer will be around 2.7 something, okay? Now for the third question, for question two, determine the slope angle beta, which the slope will make with the stability lumbar. 
method. If the factor safety for the slope is 2.75, right? Now, for the gamma equals to 18. 18 km per cubic meter. So Kn per cubic meter, right? And you got C equals to 20.5 kPa. And you got phi equals to 35 degrees, OK? And then factor safety, according to question two, is equal to 2.75, OK? And H is equal to 3 meters, right? So here, what's the CD? It's equal to the C divided by FSC. Again, 20.5 divided by 2.75 give you to 7.4845, right? And then you got the NS, the stability number. Is it equal to gamma H over C? So you got what? 18 times 3 over 7.45 kPa, right? That is the kPa. 7.45, OK? Now, that will give you the stability number, 7.24. OK? Now, uh, what's tangent phi? It's equal to tangent phi over the factor safety, right? 2.75. So you got Once you got the the phi here, right? Ooh, what's wrong?
once you got the the five D, and then you can look up for the stability number chart, and you can work out the beta, right? The beta is equal to sixty eight degree. Now, uh, I'm sorry that the pen is not so stable, so I I I lost everything for the question Q three, right? So I'm not going to to redo it again. So I better leave you to to do right your your own calculation at home, and then uh, you can check with Bushun. That will give you in the next week, okay? And for the question, the last question, Q4. Now, uh, I think we have go through the procedure for the method of slices for the, you know, for this question. Okay. Uh, you better to divide here the slope into, say, uh, eight pieces, you know, eight pieces. So you divide it into, you know, into, you know, the eight pieces. Or slices, and then you can work out the the table of the calculation, right? The alpha, the w, w sine alpha, w cosine alpha, and so on, and work out the safety factor from the formula. Okay. Now that ends up our tutorial. I'm sorry that the pen is so unstable that I can't, you know, maneuver, right? In writing, I'm sorry for that. I think I better to perhaps to replace a new pen in our next lecture and the tutorial. Okay. So, any question for the tutorial? Could I leave the, all these tutorial problems to you so that you can practice this question at home and try your best before you come to the you know the solution, right? Is that okay? So thank you for your patience tonight, because uh, I have many technical problems with my pen. Sorry for that. OK, if no problem, I'll say goodbye to you. Okay, by your no question. So, are you all?
Well, the, uh, if you want to know the, the design number of the slices, it, depend, it depends on the accuracy you are, aiming at, you are aiming at, right? If you divide the, you know, the, the saw mass into not eight pieces, say 80 pieces, 80 pieces, then you will have, you will get a more accurate answer, right? But I think we better leave the too many slices by the computers, okay? But for the examination or the assignment, you, usually we will specify the number of slices. Okay, can you, can I answer your question? Okay. So anyone has, have other questions regarding the lecture or the tutorial? Okay.